Welcome back to Horrors Worldwide. Today, I'm going to explain a science fiction horror film called Alien, released in 1979. Alien became an instant box office hit and led the way for a media franchise of films, novels, comic books, video games, and toys. So, let's see what the hype is all about. Caution! Spoilers ahead! Watch out and stay safe! We begin with a shot of space and an echoing, eerie soundtrack. The director's ode to the main theme of the movie, about which you shall find out soon enough. As shown in the opening screen, the commercial towing vehicle is called the Nostromo and has seven crew members on board. The vehicle carries coal and is essentially a mining ship and is on its way home to Earth. A signal received by the ship's computer, called the Mother, wakes up the hibernating crew members. The crew members just woken up from a long slumber, freshen up and eat, happy and unaware. They joke around as they assume they are close to home because that is when they are supposed to be awoken by the mother. Captain Dallas accesses the mother and finds something shocking. He informs the crew they are only halfway to their destination. Mother has directed the ship towards the signal as she is programmed to do, especially since the signal was from an unknown origin, not a known planet. The science officer Ash further adds that it needs to be investigated out as a per clause in their contracts. The crew, with some reluctance, head out to investigate the signal. The crew face a difficult landing on the planet, and this forces the crew to split as the engineers Parker and Brett warns Officer Ripley and Science Officer Ash stay on board to repair the ship, while Captain Dallas, Executive Officer Kane, and Navigator Lambert head out to investigate. While the three head out, Ripley wants to try and intercept the signal as Mother has not been able to identify it. Dallas, Kane, and Lambert, on the other hand, came across an abandoned ship. They find a massive body of skeletons strapped to a seat. As they examine it closely, they figure out that the life form must have exploded from the inside. While the crew is exploring the ship, back on Nostromo, Ripley realizes that the signal sent to the mother was not an SOS signal after all. It was a warning signal. Ripley cannot inform the rest as they had lost communication with the three members as soon as they entered the abandoned ship. Kane comes across a chamber full of eggs and, while exploring, falls into the chamber. As he gets closer to the egg, the egg breaks open, exposing a moving, organic creature. He leans in closer for a better look, but the creature springs out and breaks his helmet, attaching itself to his face. Dallas and Lambert hurriedly take Kane back to Nostromo. Ripley, as acting senior officer, does not open the door to Nostromo for them. She informs that they have to stay quarantined as per procedure and she cannot let them into the ship as they can infect others. But Ash overrides her decision and opens the door to let the three in. They move Kane to a stretcher and break open his helmet. They find a slimy green creature attached to his face. Ash tries to remove the tentacles off Kane's face but the face hugger tightens his hole around Kane's neck. On X-ray, they find it has something down Kane's throat and is feeding itself to Kane's oxygen. Dallas suggests removing it as soon as possible, but Ash stops him. Ash wants to investigate the creature a bit more before they kill it. On cutting the creature, they find it bleeds a toxic molecular acid instead of blood that eats through the ship down to the lowest deck of the ship. Parker is creeped out and claims the acid gives it a very good defense mechanism and now just wants to go home. Ass is shown to be super interested in the creature and examines its fluid under a microscope. The alien has detached from Kane's face, but Ash is still not willing to throw it off the ship. The crew head back to Earth. Kane recovers and has a mild cough, but seems to be doing fine. Now, as the crew gets closer to their destination, they are sitting for a meal. Kane suddenly begins feeling sick and coughs up blood while having dinner. Soon, he convulses and in the most shocking scene of them all, has his chest burst open and a baby alien pops out. Ash does not let anyone touch it, giving the creature time to run off somewhere into the ship. The crew, scared out of their minds, decide to go look for the creature. Dallas splits them into two teams. Ripley has Parker and Brett, while Dallas takes Lambert and Ash. Ripley and her team find something moving as they approach it slowly. A cat jumps out at them and runs away scared. You may have been wondering who the seventh crew member was, as mentioned in the opening scene. Well, you know now. It was a cat called Jones. 
Ripley orders Brett to go after the cat as the creature may harm it too. As Brett is searching for the cat, he comes across thin papery shredded skin but shrugs and lets it go unaware it's the creature's shed of skin. As Brett comes closer to the cat, we see the alien, now grown thrice in size, come behind him. The cat growls at something behind Brett, which makes Brett turn to see the alien's sharp teeth on his face. Brett is gruesomely taken away by the alien. One down, five remain. The crew is now aware that the creature is big and uses oxygen from his victims to survive. After a heated discussion, they decided to explore the air vents as the alien must be using them to survive. Dallas enters the ducts, planning to force the creature into an airlock, but Lambert informs him that the alien is coming right towards him. Suddenly, we see the alien standing in front of Dallas, as we hear a scream and lights go off. Ripley is devastated and Lambert cries out in anger. The crew, terrified and upset, plan on leaving the ship in a shuttle. But Ripley, as the senior officer now, informs them that the shuttle is not enough to take four people. They need to keep searching for the alien. Ripley now takes control of Mother and accesses it to find answers. She discovers that the priority of this mission was to ensure the safe return of the organism for analysis. All the other crew members were considered expendable. Ripley confronts Ash and they both get into a fight with Ash, violently pushing Ripley down and choking her. Parker comes in and pushes him off Ripley and clubs Ash, and to everyone's surprise, finds out that Ash is an android. Parker and Lambert keep hitting Ash till his head is detached and switches off. Later, Ripley gets his head back together with the help of the crew and reactivates him. Ash informs them that he was hired to ensure the creature's survival and it is impossible to kill the alien. The creature is a perfect organism with no conscience or morality hindering his motives. Ash taunts the crew that their chance of survival is bleak. Ripley hits his head to disconnect him and then they incarcerate Ash. The remaining three decide to blow up Nostromo and they try their chance at the shuttle. While they desperately try to gather life support supplies, the alien reappears and kills Parker and Lambert. Ripley initiates a self-destruct sequence and the clock starts ticking. She has 10 minutes to escape and while climbing out the exit, she discovers Dallas covered in the alien's toxic acid and skin and calls out to Ripley to help him. But Ripley, knowing she can do nothing for him, burns him with a flamethrower. Ripley makes it out of the ship into the shuttle with only one minute left to self-destruct. She manages to take off as she watches Nostronome explode. She has James, the cat with her and is about to relax, only to find that the alien has managed to escape with her in the shuttle. It hid in the narrow space. Ripley runs into a corner to wear a spacesuit. She tries to flush the creature out with gas, but the alien still approaches her. She opens the airlock door, but the alien manages to hang on by the frame. She then uses a gun with a grappling hook that throws the alien into space but loses control of her gun which gets stuck as the airlock closes. The alien is now tethered to the shuttle. Ripley in her final attempt fires the engine on and blasts the creature away into space. Finally, Ripley creates a log in the final entry of the mission and this brings us to an end. What happens to Ripley after this? Well, we will let you know as we review the next part of the franchise soon.